about you, Mr. Irvin. Okay, welcome back to the Bishop PE podcast. Today we're joined by Scottish professional boxer Hannah Rankin. Good morning, Hannah. Morning, nice to see you. Morning. Um, we're also joined, as ever, by Mr. McHugh. Mr. McHugh, how are you doing? I'm all right. I'm all right. I've yeah. actually went to the extent to wear my boxing t-shirt this morning. Nice to see you. Who's on it? What's that? Who's on it? Ah, the legend, Muhammad Ali, man. Excellent. Superb. Um, we're also joined by A6 sports captain Adele Brown. Morning, Adele. Morning. Lovely. Looks like a very fancy dining room there, is that? It's lovely, aye. Yeah, yeah. very nice. <laughs> um, so, Han, I'm going to start this off this morning. Um, I'm just going to ask the first question, and I'm going to ask you um, about your school career. And how did you find your school career? Did you go into fourth year, fifth year, sixth year? So, I went to Hermitage Academy, and I went all the way to my sixth year. Um, I actually, yeah, school was all right, you know, like I, I didn't hate it or anything like that, you know. Um, I was actually, when I was at school, I was studying to, like, I wanted to be a musician probably about, from about fourth year. So I decided that um, I'd stay on till sixth year, get my advanced higher music at that time um, and my advanced higher English, that's what I worked on. I didn't have any plans on becoming a sports person at that point. Uh, I was fully focused on becoming a musician and I went to study at the Royal Conservatory of Scotland. And uh, yeah, that was my main focus at the time. I was really involved in music at school. I was doing all that sort of stuff. Not, I, I love sport. I used to play badminton for school. Um, and did the no, I wasn't planning on being a sports person. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Uh, what was your kind of favourite subject at school? You obviously touched on music and PE. Uh, and was there any particular role models when you were at school? Yeah, no, so I absolutely loved PE. It was my favourite thing at school because I, I'm pretty hyperactive. Uh, if you ever get to meet me, you'll know that. I can't sit still for five seconds. So PE was my time in the day where I could actually let loose some of my steam and run around a little bit, get going. Yeah. So PE um, good and as some fantastic teachers as well they're really inspiring you know they were just yeah. always putting on new projects new uh, orchestra things good yeah. yeah great yeah who, who who in particular was that mr mcdonald mr mccauley mrs walker good department there, you know? always keeping it busy so yeah. it was good Superb. yeah what do you do um, yeah, so when you were younger, did you have any part-time jobs? And if you did, do you feel that they helped you develop skills that have helped you in your professional boxing career? So, good question, actually. Um, I grew up on a farm, so I'm the eldest of three sisters. And I've been pretty much working on the farm since I was like, yay hi. So, um, yeah, no, I was constantly uh, always out doing stuff, working with the animals. I had lots of jobs to do at home. I never had a, a part-time job whilst I was studying at school. You know, I never had something at the weekends until I actually finished my secondary school. Um, but that's because I used to use my weekends to go and do extra sort of schooling for music. So I didn't yeah, actually have right. time to to do a part-time job it was fine my parents kept me busy <laughs> so it was okay <laughs> I think it was really tough, tough tough work that would be I would imagine yeah it was so, you know like getting up super early you got to feed all the animals go look after everything animals always come first on a farm so it doesn't matter if you're hungry you can wait <laughs> <laughs> I mean. um, could you also tell us a wee bit about your journey and your route into boxing yeah, so when I was younger, I actually did Taekwondo. Um, so this is just leading in before I went to secondary school. So I did Taekwondo. And uh, I think my mum made me and my sister do it because we were fighting all the time at home. So she was like, here, you can have a, an actual excuse to go and fight properly, you know, but at a club somewhere, you know. Uh, so I used to do that and I absolutely loved it. And I like, it's kind of like the discipline of the sport, you know, there's all these rules and, but it's just about being focused and working really hard and also let me get off some steam as well. And then when I went into my music, I kind of stopped doing combat sports. I was doing other sports, but combat sports were seen as a bit dangerous. So I had to kind of focus on my music instead. But when I was doing my master's, my undergraduate up in Glasgow, back into Thai boxing. Um, yeah. And I moved to London to do my master's. And I met my coach, he introduced me to boxing. And I just absolutely loved everything about it. It was just like the discipline of it. And I got really focused, really into it. So I started boxing really, really late, to be honest. But absolutely loved it. So, yeah. 
Excellent. Hi, you mentioned there about obviously your time at the, the Royal Conservatoire and then the Royal Academy of Music in London. How, how do you find that balance going from one that's really kind of calm, composed, and then having to go to the, the boxing element where there's a little bit more kind of energy and more. <laughs> A bit of energy, that's probably the best way of saying it. Um, <laughs> but when I started boxing, I actually, like, there was quite a lot of similarities for me. Uh, you know, when you go and stand up on stage, your heart's racing, you've got that adrenaline moment, you're going to play a, a big solo, and everyone's listening to you, everybody wants to hear what you've got to do. And it's actually really similar to when you get up in the ring on fight night, and everybody's watching you. So it's, yeah. it's all about what you do in the moment, how you perform. So they actually had a lot of similarities, but I think helped improve my confidence for solo performing as a musician like I always love playing in orchestra and stuff like that but as a soloist I used to get really nervous um but boxing actually put in perspective you know no one was going to punch me in the face when I was playing the bassoon so you know like it made it a lot better and I actually enjoy performing a lot more <laughs> so yeah no they, they kind of work well for me but there are differences you know I can be really focused for both of them and uh, yeah. I must say it's on my bucket list I don't know how to play an instrument actually yeah. Everybody can play an instrument, in my opinion. An instrument yeah. out there, but even if you think you're not musical at all, there'll be something that you're good at. So uh, give it a go. Adele, Adele, my money's on you for the wee triangle. Yeah, spoons. <laughs> play spoons. Sorry, what instrument do you play, Anna? I play the bassoon. So it's yeah. like a, a, it's the biggest woodwind instrument. It plays the bass line in the music. Um, yeah. I started on flute. When School, but I changed the bassoon later on because um, yeah. it was such a weird. I always like something that's a little bit different, um, and we always like the comedy lines or the bass lines. So we're always like the joker of the orchestra, <laughs> or we're just playing along at the bottom, just one or the other. <laughs> Hannah, I read that you're still are you still sort of teaching or, or, or doing some sort of coaching alongside that? Yeah, yeah. So um, as well as my boxing, obviously, I, I teach boxing classes as well, and I have some PTs that I work with. But um, I also teach music to kids. I teach flute, clarinet, and bassoon as well. And I freelance with professional orchestras in and around London, as well as uh, I have a wind quintet, and we do a lot of music inside care homes um, and into schools. So we play a lot for kids and and also people who live with dementia. So it's a really rewarding job, and I wouldn't I wouldn't change it for the world. Oh, amazing, amazing. Credit, credit. Just, sorry, Mr. McHugh, before you go there, see um, Hannah, see. After boxing, do you, do you see that as a kind of career for you? Yeah. I think music is something that I'll, I'll have for the rest of my life. It's something that yeah. I started at a young age. And it's not got a time limit on it. It's something that you yeah. can always work right until you know, you're a lot older. Um, but I think when I retire as a, a boxer, I still will be very much involved in boxing. I'm absolutely in love with the sport. And I've always really wanted to continue working in it, maybe do some coaching. But also, I quite like commentary. I'd love to do some of that. So, yeah, no, I think I'll always have a mixture of everything because yeah. they all make you know? Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Just moving on to your, your professional boxing career, Hannah. Um, yeah. Obviously, you'll, you'll get a big fight coming up in a couple of weeks' time, but what, how, would you, how would you sum up your professional career? What, how, what would you sum up in a, a few sentences? So, basically, my professional career was uh, all about let's take every opportunity that I'm given and run with it. I'm not one of those people who started like, you know, Floyd Mayweather, he finished with like however many at 50 and 0 or something, you know. I was never planning on finishing my career as like undefeated to the best boxer in the world. I actually started it to see how far I could take it. And as it happened, uh, with a lot of hard work and diligence, you know, I became world champion last year. And, you know, it's amazing what you can do if you put your mind to it. So for me, when all those opportunities came up, I said, yeah, I'll take it. Yeah, I want to see what, where I am, how good I could be. So, yeah, I've never said no to a fight, and I've fought all over the world, and I've had an amazing career. So it's kind of how I want to be, and I always take those opportunities and, and see where I am and work hard. What do you, what do you think is the best part of it being involved with boxing itself? Is it the travelling around? Does it yeah, I love the travelling, but actually it's the people. Um, you know, like, it doesn't matter where you go in the world. You can walk into any boxing gym, you put the on, and you start working out. You're part of the team. Nobody, yeah. uh, you're not ever like stopped from training just because of who you are or being a, a woman as well mm. anything like that you know you're respected for being a fighter and that's it and you don't even need to speak the language in the country if you can fight you can fight and it's very simple you know and that's what i love about it there's lots of respect in the sport for sure yeah fair enough 
Yeah, um, obviously, you've come up against some some high quality fighters. Is there any that really stand out for you, and, and any reason why? Um, yeah, so I uh, last last year I fought um, a couple of years ago actually. Now I fought Carissa Shields, who's probably going to go down as one of the pound for pound greatest ever female fighters on this planet. Um, we had a great build up to the fight. We fought for the unified middleweight championship of the world. Uh, it was live on Sky Sports on Matchroom, beamed across the world. I was in Kansas at the time, actually in America. Um, and it was an amazing fight. And, you know, we put on an absolute show for the fans. And now, actually, since that fight, even though I lost it, uh, me and her, actually, we work together. We have the same manager. We're promoted by the same company. And we're now really good friends. But in the lead up to that, we really not get on. <laughs> we, were not we thought it was nothing in common. But actually, now we're working together. Yeah, no, we're, we're really good friends. And it was a fantastic fight. So something that will definitely go to in my kind of one of the best. Yeah, but how do you how do you find that? Because obviously a lot of all, the kind of the media stuff beforehand is like aggressive, and, and then sometimes after it's a wee trouble. How, how, how does that come about? So basically, at the end of the day, you've got to remember it's a fight. You're yeah. not going in there have a cuddle that's not how it's gonna work you're not going in there to be friends um somebody's going in there to always be better than the other person and whoever comes out best is the winner it's very simple it's one-on-one -on -one competition there's you know you have your teams in the corner but at the end of the day it's just you two in the ring and it's right back down to that sort of gladiatorial level where they used to have all the fights back in those days it's exactly the same sort of thing so we're not trying to be friends beforehand and we, we certainly don't want to be, you know, because when you get in there, it's just you versus that person and it's your competition. So, yeah, it's, the end of, it's always respect at the end of it. You know, most of the time, you don't like um, Yeah, you know, put it all on the line when you get in the ring. Excellent, excellent. Um, what, would, what would you say is that the highlights of your, your career so far? Highlights of my career? Amazing things. Uh, in the lead up to that, Fight, uh, we had to go to New York for a day for a press <laughs> so like 24 hours <laughs> which is insane you know oh. I flew to a press conference around the world um, and then yeah I was in I was putting this suite in in New York in a hotel it was probably bigger than my entire flat put together and that was just mine my coach had his own as well we had like four bathrooms between us it was insane um, so that sort of stuff is amazing I've also been, I spent two weeks in Kiev working with Cecilia Brackhouse, who's one of the top female fighters. And it was amazing to work with her as part of a, part of a training camp. She had a big fight coming up and I'm a sparring partner for that. Um, yeah, just I'd never, you know, Ukraine before. So that was insane as well. So yeah, it's been some exciting times. Brilliant. Um, obviously, the highlights of some things become low points in your career. Is there any, maybe short injury set parts or any other particular set from. Yeah, you, you can't you can't be in a sport where it's there's not going to be setbacks and it's all competition. You know, somebody wins and somebody's always got to lose. Um, my defense of my world title last year in Malta was one of my low points. Uh, back on the fight, I wasn't mentally in the right place before I went into the ring. And that in boxing, they always say if all of the problems you have, you have to leave it outside the ring because mm. otherwise. It just will not go to plan in the boxing ring. And yeah. that's exactly what happened. I got dropped for the first time in my career. Um, I fought back and it was a controversial loss on the scorecards, you know, but it was definitely not my best performance. And coming back being world champion up here and then dropping, losing it all down to here, you know, you find out who your friends are. You also find out what sponsors really want to work with you, you know, and who support you and who really weren't only in there for the ride sort of thing. Yeah. And that's a very hard thing to learn. Um, so I came back from that and I fought in February this year and I had a fantastic performance. Um, I stopped to go in rounds, a former world champion. So yeah, it was, it, you learn a lot from your losses, but also the ones where you know mentally, you probably weren't 100% there for it. And actually, yeah. that's, you know, but it's, you yeah. know. You Fair enough. Yeah. Love it. We, we, uh, we spend a lot of time in higher, advanced higher national five talk to kids about training. Um, yep. what, what's your typical kind of training regime, Hannah, in, in terms of like a, a week? Like, how many times would you train? Would you do different types of training? Yeah, so um, I suppose as a boxer, you start, go into training camp. So if I've got like a world title fight coming up, you know, like an eight-week to ten-week training camp, and in that training camp, 
you have a mixture of obviously you've got your sparring and your boxing with your coach, you know, on the pads and the bags and all that sort of stuff. Um, I also have, I have two sessions of strength and conditioning a week, two sessions of cardio sprints. Um, and I do that in an altitude center. So I do all my training at like 5,000 feet. So all of my done at line feet, which I think makes a massive difference. Um, and yeah. then, of course, all your recovery as well to add into that because that's a really important part of training. So, obviously, the nutrition, um, you, I use cryotherapy to help my body recover. Um, but, Wait. yeah, in a way, I've been training quite a day, Monday. Uh, Monday. Yeah. yeah. Adele, you should be able to make links to that, given that you're a higher PE pupil, you know. <laughs> you're doing advanced fire this year, so you'll be able to use that to your advantage. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you spoke you spoke there a bit about the kind of mental side as well. Uh, yeah. What kind of things do you do to prepare for the, for the mental side? So, yeah. so actually, uh, in the lead up to this world title fight, I've got kind of, I've been working with a sports psychologist. Yeah. I think it's important to actually, you know, we do all this training on our bodies and everything, but our mind is so important. So um, it's great. Lots of visualization techniques. Put uh, some what your goals are, your aspirations. Make sure your team's all on the right page, you know. And once you start these techniques, visualize how you want the team you're going to be, and uh, reinforcement, all of that sort of stuff. And your team's on the same page. You all start to work towards the same goal, and you'll start to see it happening. In training, you know. You visualize that win. You visualize you get to the win. You visualize all the outcomes that could happen, and then work through them, beat them then go through it again and it's um visualization is a massively important thing for any sort of athlete that's wanting to kind of reach the top and become the top of their game um, and i think it's a huge part of my training as well yeah good that's uh, really really interesting benefits, speak of, benefits and limitations adele come on benefits <laughs> and limitations of visualization uh, i can't remember <laughs> <laughs> okay i'll let you give us your next question then um what could we do more to promote women in sport and in particular women in boxing? So uh, this is a great topic. I think at the moment, especially Scotland is doing amazingly for women in sport in general. You know, I think we're really pushing forward. Um, and actually what I've found is if you're Scottish and you're winning or you're competing at something and you become a champion or you, you win a race or whatever, Scotland will back you 100%. It's different down here in England. I find that to be very strange. But in Scotland, if, if you're like, because I'm fighting an English girl in a couple of weeks, so it's Scotland v England, massive, you know, competition there going on. But, you know, I think Scotland, we're really pushing our female athletes, which is nice to see. Um, more could be done. Um, the fact that Eddie Hearn started to put on a lot more women's fights in boxing, I think that's been, um, because people now see us on TV and get See yeah. what we can actually do beforehand. Yeah. People didn't really understand like boxing. They're just having a go, you know. And actually, the last were fantastic. And now you've got the general public talking about it. So being given that airtime has allowed us to really showcase what we can do. And now people are more interested in it. Mm -hmm. So it was just getting given that chance. And now we've had the chance. We've run with it, and people are now much more excited. So anytime you get a chance promote women's sport on like on air on radio on tv and um, put out a good performance of yourself then that's the best that we can do you know push it you know get people talking about it. that's what's really important yeah yeah um, and is there any advice that you would give to the youth of today yes actually i would uh so there's a um, there's a few things i would say when it comes to what you want to do with your or life, uh, where you go, or plans, aspirations, and goals and stuff. Uh, make sure you've got a good team of people around you for whatever you want to do that back you. You know, at the end of the day, my team are around me and support me, and they'll push me hard so that I can achieve my goals. You need the like, same like-minded people around you to be positive and push you forward, and always like be there to help you when it's difficult. You know, I guess you get that. Um, so don't be afraid to change your mind of what you want to do right so i started out as a well as a, a young person wanting to be a musician went and did my two degrees did an extra one and then actually i fell in love with boxing and, yeah. and everyone thought oh you're absolutely nuts 
what are you doing? You're starting a professional sporting career in your 20s. And I was like, no, I can do it. You know, and I, I believed in myself. And it's never too late to change your mind about what you want to do. So I think it's really important that, okay, so you set out to do this, but actually you really, your passion lies elsewhere. Follow your dreams, do something that you want to do, and you'll be a lot happier for it. And don't be put off by what people say. Just stay fast on that. Yeah? Brilliant. A great message. Um, Hannah, I just want to ask you about your, your upcoming fight in two weeks' time. Uh, Savannah Marshall, is that correct? Yeah. Um, what, what can you tell us? Can you tell us much about that and how you're feeling about the fight coming up? Um, are you anxious? Are you nervous? How are you, how are you feeling? No, so I'm really, really, really excited about this fight. I cannot wait to get in there. It's a fight that we were talked about uh, at the beginning of the year, actually, when I fought in February. I was meant to fight her. Then she decided, oh, no, after I had that fantastic week, she was going up to a different weight class to fight. So she basically ran away. Um, and then, like, we had COVID. And then, so the fight was talked about again in the middle of the lockdown. And then it came around again. So I've been preparing for this fight pretty much for most of the year. So I feel in such a great place about it. Um, also, I'm stepping up to middleweight. Um, I've already been a world champion before, so I know exactly how it feels to be, be a world champion, what it takes to be a world champion. So I'm looking forward to going out there and showcasing the best of me. Um, and she's never been tested. So it's going to be an interesting fight for everybody to watch. But at the end of the day, I'm going to be coming away with that world title and bring it home to Scotland. So, yeah, I'm really excited about it. Excellent. And that's, that'll be on Sky Sports 17th of October, is that correct? Absolutely, yeah. Do we, have a, do we have a fight time yet? Um, so I'm co, co main event. A lot of people say we should be the main event, but that's by the way. Uh, so yeah, we're the co main event, so it'll probably be around about like the, the, I would say the 8 30, 9 o'clock mark, because those fights, the fight camp hasn't been going too late for these ones, because it's a shorter, a smaller card for people fighting. So, is that still, yeah. is that one still at the back couch, say, Eddie Hill? Just in the back no, it's not more for these ones so the, there's a fight happening tonight uh, a big show and that's happening at Milton Keynes at the um the football stadium there uh, so we might be fighting there and if we're not fighting there I think we're fighting somewhere else but because of COVID it's all behind closed doors so this time actually the pressure's off you, you don't have to think about oh I'll be going into this space for like weeks in advance you just got to turn up and get on with it yeah. which is actually really <laughs> so yeah do you think the, fan, the fans will make much of a difference for me, no. Uh, being a musician, um, I've, I've performed to like literally two people in an audience. I've performed to a massive like yeah, auditorium. So for me, I, it doesn't make any difference whatsoever. Um, I think it might make a difference to her. She's she's not used to fighting without that big sort of arena and all that sort of thing. So it might be a really different experience for her. But for me, I fight in the car park. I don't really mind, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, listen, Harry, your finisher. So if you choose any five dinner or party guests to celebrate your upcoming title winning fight, who would they be and why? So I actually had a little think about this. I was thinking about all the, like, you know, some really cool like boxers and famous people out there. But to be perfectly honest, the people I'd choose would be my, my team. So my coach, Noel Callan, who's been with me my, my whole career. My cut man, Richard Farnan, he's been with me my whole career. Gary Jacobs, a very famous Scottish boxer. He's part of my team, joined my team about three or four fights ago. He's like my uncle now, so I'd have him there. I'd have to have my fiancé there as well. It'd be good for him to come and celebrate. And probably my manager, Sam Kinnock in Scotland. There's loads of lovely, cool, famous people out there, but these are the people that have been with me my whole career and people Absolutely. that supported me. And we'd have an absolutely epic celebration. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, brilliant. Hannah, all patient out. Yeah, no, excellent. Um, thank you very much for joining us today, Hannah. Really, really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, um, thanks as well, Adele, Mr McHugh. Good to see everybody. And anybody watching, make sure you get across to our YouTube channels uh, and our Spotify, as well as our Twitter page, at Bishy P. Make sure you give it a follow. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks so much. Good day, guys. Bye. Bye.